Hello there, it's John Etheridge. How long has it been? Ages, probably over a year or more. Um, I've been having a go with Faber-Castell pit pens at the moment and um, I thought it might be useful for me to just show you the two I've done previous to now um, and then show you what I've just finished and what I'm currently working on. So altogether, that's only four pictures. Um, now, this was the first ever one I did with Faber-Castell pit pens. Um, bit of a learning curve. I did a slightly different technique on this to what I'm doing with the other ones that I'm doing now. Um, and what I'm going to do is, uh, when I get to the end of this, just showing you a couple of pictures, that's all it is. When I get to the end of that, I'm just going to finish off the very last bit of the, the, the leopard picture that I'm doing. Um, it's on a multimedia paper. Um, and um, just let you see and watch how I how I go about it really um, I'll possibly speak about some things while I'm at it um, you know uh, I'll just show you that's all I can do right anyway this is a tiger this was done on watercolor paper I hope you can see it all right and there's not too much reflection going on um, now it's quite a big painting and uh, I do, they say you can't blend Faber-Castell pit pens well I mean there's the proof you can um, having said that this was my very first attempt um, I'm not sure where the whites came from I'm not sure if they were the Faber-Castell pit white pen um, or whether I had another white pen um, but that wasn't all of the white bits it has to be said it was just sort of details um, now I the, the way I blended with this one it was on watercolor paper so I basically um, laid the colour on and very quickly blended that out with a wet brush. Um, and that's basically how I pursued that one. Um, didn't really take that long. And uh, I mean, I think for a first attempt, with um, which are considered some quite hard pens to use for blending especially, um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that one. Uh, so... I went on to the next one, and that was also on watercolour paper. Um, I got to say, I wasn't actually quite as pleased with this one. It's like I had a bit of inspiration for the first one, and uh, on the second one, kind of lost my way a bit. Having said that, it's not bad. Um, I think the worst bit of it for me is is, is the sky is very patchy. Um, I would probably look to do that a different way another time because. I think with the what it was with the famous Castell pit pens is you don't really want to be filling in large areas with it. Um, if you've got large areas, you're probably better off getting uh, bottles of ink, perhaps, if you're going to stick to ink or maybe using an urban medium. Um, the whites, again, I used a white pen. That could have been the Faber Castell. I can't actually remember and details in here, but... Uh, all of it, the, the whole picture was uh, pit pens, as far as I know, um, or as far as I can remember, rather, and uh, yeah, not too bad. Right, <coughs> now, the third picture I did was, um, I finished about a week ago, and uh, it was um, kind of inspired by, uh, I think it's a a Aaron Blaze, Aaron B Bias, I, uh, should really read his name properly but he's um he works for Walt Disney from what I can gather and uh he's he's a fantastic guy so there's no two ways about that um but he was working with some ink pens um they weren't the Faber Castell pens but he was doing like these black and white pictures and I can't say I thought they were stunning and um they kind of inspired me to do a picture based on the black and white ones um now, for me, that was quite a learning curve because I've done it on a, um, well, I'll show you, sorry. There you go, there, there it is, this, the elephant, black and white elephant. With shades of grey in the ears and shadowy areas, right? Now, it was quite a challenge for me, that, because I'm not one for letting the paper show through. I cover up the paper. Um, now, all these mid-tone greys that have come in with the paper, I'm generally adding them because of the mediums I use. Um, so to be leaving areas, um, probably isn't that many really, but showing through, 
um, whereby um, the grey was showing through was, was quite a challenge for me. Um, and all this was done in Faber-Castell pit pens and I think there was, let me think, one, two, white and black, three, possibly four pens. So uh, yeah, I was quite pleased with that one. Uh, it was on a multimedia paper. In fact, that was a clear Fontaine. Um, they kindly gave me a pad uh, a while back and uh, that was on that. So now I wanted to do this leopard, this next leopard. Um, now I wanted to do it just like this. Um, I thought I'd do a whole series, but when I started to, to, to lay the colour on, it was pushing me towards adding colour. Um, uh, you know, like vibrant colours. And um, I quickly came away from the black and white um, style of doing it. Um, as I say, that's not, that's kind of alien to me. Um, so adding colour was again where I'm at. So let me just put that down. Um, I'll just show you the pad I used firstly. It's the Paint On Clear Fontaine. Um, they kindly gave me a couple of these, so that was nice of them. I'm not sponsored in any way by anybody, but that was nice of them. Um, so I started doing this leopard, and uh, it came away from black and white. I was trying to use the tone of the paper and the black and white picture, so the tone would be the mid-tones. Um, but I quickly came away from that because it wasn't doing it for me. Um, having said that, now looking at the result I'm getting, I'm actually really, really pleased. Um, and again, this is all um, Faber-Castell pit pens. So I'll just bring it a bit closer. Yeah, I'm absolutely thoroughly thrilled to bits with this one at the moment, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, this is the tone of the paper. I'm not going to do anything up here. I'm just going to leave it as it is. But you can see I've got all this bit around here to finish. Um, and this bit here, actually, I'm making up. So it's kind of uh, a bit complicated and, and, and all the rocks need finishing. Um, so I'm going to kind of just start painting now. Well, I say painting, drawing, painting, whatever you want to call it. Um, I call it painting with pens, but that's just my opinion. Um, and you'll see how I progress and I'll try and tell you what I'm doing. So I'm going to move the camera. I'm going to move my light and uh, we'll see where we are. We'll see you in a minute. Bye. <clears throat> the reason I have to do this is because every time I stop the camera, it basically stops filming. I don't understand how to use it, you see. So there we go. I'll try and zoom in on the picture. Let me see where we are. Yeah, that should be fine. So I'll be working here. So I'll tell you what I'm doing, and then um, then hopefully we can uh, you can see how I'm doing it and work out how to do it. So basically, I'm going to be cutting off this part here um, because I've worked out um, looking at uh, lots and lots and lots of photographs that that this if I put his leg right through here, it's not going to be right. So I'm going to cut it off actually on, on the reference I was using to begin with I couldn't barely see it but there was a bit of rock going up here so that's what I'm going to do um, and it'll help me um, it's a bit of a cheat it gets rid of most of that part of the leg um, so that's fantastic now what I did do to begin with was filled in with white and then blended a bit of um, greeny gold on top right now the white is the most important pen in this set to me um, so you'll see that I can now go over that. I'm now going to bring the rock up through here um, and um, yeah, I'll just do it and then we can see where we are. The best thing to do is to go from light to dark. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to fill this in on top of the white. I'm going to go over the, that little part of yellow or orange, whatever you want to call it. All right. And I'm going to block that in with the lightest colour as much as I can. All right. Now, what I can do before that dries is I can go in with a darker colour. Right, then we try that. And uh, 
I can use my finger to blend it round, look. On top of the white, it blends nice. If you want it blended, of course. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in, try and work out where I want some sort of uh, lighter, highlighted parts to show. So we'll say through here, through here perhaps, perhaps a bit through here. Um, and leave some lighter parts. So I'm just going to colour that in, leaving the lighter parts again. And you'll see the darker colour. Albeit these are quite transparent, these pens, is going over the lighter colour. Alright. So, there we go. And just for some added difference, I'm just going to blend in a bit of brown in there as well. Just to have some different tone, shade, interest, whatever you want to call it. And if I want, I can just blend that in. I can blend it in with a lighter colour. That's generally what I would do. Um, right, so I'm going to let that bit dry. And now I'm going to start working down here. Now, to do this part here, all this orange, basically I did it the same as that. I coloured in a uh, greeny gold down here. Right, and... Then what I did was, is I used a big bullet pen. See the difference in size? And I used a lighter colour to use to blend this with. It's a bit like colourless markers or, or a colourless blender in pencil. So I used that to blend this round and smooth it out and uh, carried it on down here and that bit shouldn't be quite as dark as it was it's just that I made the mistake with the leg and everything and decided to change it so I'm showing you I can change things as well um, so anyway I blended all that in had different tonal values going on all around here you can see where I've gone a bit darker here and lighter here um, and that's just by using the two pens and using the lighter pen to blend the darker pen and then possibly going on with a warm grey in the darker areas of this uh, these orangey bits again so I'm letting that dry I've done that part and what I'm doing now is I'm adding some more spots on you'll see that I've started here now as I said the best thing to do in my opinion is to go from light to dark now these are black spots so how do you go from light to dark well, what I'm doing is I'm using a sepia pen. Now, the reason I'm using a sepia pen is because the sepia pen lends itself to the colour of this animal. Um, you can sort of kind of see lots of sepia in here. And what I will do is I will mark out where I want the spots with my pencil, and then I'll just colour them in with a sepia pen. Now, these are going to dry up lighter. But the good thing is, if I was to make a mistake, what I can do is, because this is a lighter version of dark brown or black, I can actually cover it up with white. So let's say for argument's sake, I didn't want that spot there, but, or this spot here, I could just cover it over with white. And if I'd done perhaps two layers of white, that might actually be completely gone, especially with the book big bullet nib uh, pen but you know you won't know that until you've done it so the, the white is opaque the other ones are um, transparent translucent to transparent so I'm just coloring in these spots not only does this sepia give you a slightly lighter color with which to work with and uh, alter if needed be, it also, sorry, also helps, um, sorry, I've, I've, <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say, <laughs> I, I'm not, I got so engrossed in that piece of drawing then, I actually forgot what I was going to say, um, anyway, we're marking the areas, I'll, that'll come back to me in a minute. Right. And this dry up lighter. 
Oh, that was what I was going to say. Stupid man. It actually gives you a base to the black. The sepia gives you a base to the black. And the good thing is, like it's like with eyes, you put a blue underneath the eye just to give that black some life. Now, by putting this sepia underneath the black, it will also give you a base to the black and, uh, you know, give it some more interest. And not only that, if you leave it behind, it's going to be in context with the keeping of the animal. So, uh, so there we go. That's all I'm going to do for that. And then um, I think I'm just going to build up again. I'm just going to put in a dark grey on top before I go completely to black. Now at this point, that sepia pen will probably be, still be a little bit damp. I'll probably be doing a slight bit of mixing with the grey, which is okay. That's fine. Absolutely fine. What I will say, though, is take your time with this. I'm going quick because uh, I've kind of been doing it a lot now, as you can see. So I know where I am. And it uh, just brings out about a little bit more confidence in, in uh, stepping forward. Because these are, I wouldn't say these are the easiest things to use in the world, these pens, but uh, I'm finding them easier the more I use them, which is fantastic. Um, so, there we are. We've kind of blocked all that in. Right, now what we need to do is to let that dry. So I'll go back to this little piece of rock. Now I'm going to keep building that up. Uh, I'm going to get a darker grey, same grey actually as I just used over the top of there. Uh, I'm going to put in some shadows. And some darker areas where crevices might be in the rocks. So uh, If I want a lighter colour, I can leave that behind. Um, so that works quite well. So you can see I've left a little bit of grey there. Um, you'll see that this will go over the top of that yellow as well. Um, it's not quite covering it yet. Um, and the reason that for that is at the moment is because I actually didn't let it dry quite enough by the look of it. Another good thing to do is, I mean, I'm in my studio outside and uh, I never really turn the heating on until I come in here. And uh, having a slightly cooler area to work in will keep these pens workable for a bit longer. So I'm not saying sit there in the cold, not by any means, not by any, any means. But if you can have the temperature down a notch or two to what you normally would and you're comfortable, then do that because it will help you. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour in this little bit here of his um, leg. So I've already put some white there. I've already put a little bit of greeny gold on top, blended it in. Now I'm going to start putting the detail on top. And again, it's the same process. Find um, your sepia pen and then just draw in the darker areas. So, here we go, i got that bit there, I'd already put that in slightly, but I've put it in again now. Um, that's where a little fold has come over, um, and here, that's where the creases are. I'm putting in these darker areas where these creases are. And you can use your dark pen over the top of the white to change the direction of the creases if you want. And you can just gently dab them in so that they become a little bit less intense. Um, there we go. And there you can get a nice creased area. Right. So I'm going to show you on here. I'm just going to put that piece in there. If you, can, I hope you can see it enough. And I'm just going to gently soften that out. Okay, uh, let me see. I've got a spot coming here, which is quite good because it's against the lighter part of that rock. I'm 
kind of making this up now because um, I've already gone as far as I could um, with the reference I was uh, supplied with. Well, not supplied with, but I found. Um, so I'm kind of just making it up in this little area just so that it looks right. Um, a little spot coming around there. Again, just putting in these little areas of spots. Okay, right, now you've got a basic colour. You now need to just build that up again. And uh, like I said before, I'm going from grey to dark. So I'm just going to dab in a bit of grey over the top of that spot just to darken it up a bit more. Same with this crease. Putting a little tiny bit there, working very lightly, barely touching the paper. I can just blend that out if I need to. Dabbing on sometimes helps. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but you can see there's a nice little dark line against that little brown area now. Okay, so I've got that in, I've got this in, I need to let that dry. Okay, right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this white pen. Now this white pen, I think there might be something slightly wrong with this white pen. I have messaged Faber Castell because I got two of these, um, these smaller 1.5 bullet pens, and there's no colour in them. Um, there's a very little bit of colour in this. The other one, there's liquid in it, but there's, <laughs> there's no colour in it. It might do for blending perhaps, I don't know. But what I'm going to do is um, look at the reference and just see where all the lighter parts of fur are. And just mark them in with this lighter white. Um, I suppose to that extent it's quite handy. And the important thing to do, if you can, is to let this dry before you start doing this. Alright, so you can probably barely see it. Good thing to do is to use these spots to put some hair over and then I'll make him look furry. Um, where are we? I actually will end up putting lighter parts where darker parts are, but I'll go over the white with a colour just to colour it up a bit. Um, I'll show you that in a second. And uh, that will give us the impression of fur. These are just fur highlights, that's all these are. With a not so intense white. And the one thing with these pens is they do tend to dry up a little bit lighter than, um, than when they're laid. So you need to kind of try and keep that in, in mind wherever you can. Just putting in the, um, the shapes. Laying this white on. Shapes of the highlights, I meant. Work lightly and work fast if you can. Not absolutely necessary, you just don't want lines where lines shouldn't be.
Right, so keep adding that in wherever you think that should be. Um, just I want a little bit of what looks like fur in there, but I'm going to just dab that out with my finger just to blend it down slightly. Um, I had a bit of white go on the black that I didn't really want, so just colour negatively into it. And that way you have a little bit of a recession into the dark. It's a highlight, but a dark highlight if that makes sense. It does to me anyway. So I'm looking at my reference at the moment, trying to work out where all these lighter parts of fur are. And just drawing them in wherever I think they are. It's just shapes, that's all it is really. Just treat everything as if it's shapes. All shapes. And direct shapes and directions, that's all it is. The good thing with the white is it will dry up reasonably opaque and you can go over with a colour and it will give you a darker version, or sorry, uh, yeah, a lighter or a darker version of that colour. So that's quite a good thing. Hopefully give you some idea that there is more than one way to use these pens anyway. This is how I use them. I'm a detailed artist and uh, I don't think I'll ever be anything other than that. Right. Okay, so we've got some nice highlight in there now. Now, it looks odd because you've got a light white and a dark orange, but we're going to kind of blend that down. These will, will dry a little bit less light. Um, now, I'm just going to find the shadow areas and find the lighter areas and basically add them in with an appropriate colour. So, I'm going to get my ivory and in this area here where all the white is, I'm just going to blend that by just colouring a little bit of yellow over the top of it. So all of a sudden it's become white, uh, sorry, an ivory based fur with just a little bit of white showing rather than a bright white fur, which is not what we wanted. We just want a couple of highlights of white, that's all. We don't want anything too harsh. It blends it down, just brings it into context with the rest of the picture. Because let's be honest, it's not really white, it's where the, where the sunlight is um, reflecting off his fur. So we don't want it completely bright, stark white, because that just doesn't make sense. I'm just dabbing that on there. make that as dark or as light as you want. Okay, so I've blended that down slightly. I'm going to go back to my rock again. Right, now I'm going to get a black. Now, uh, some of you may not know, but these, these black pens, they can, well, a lot of these pens come in different sizes, but these black pens, they come in all different sizes. This is an S, that means a uh, small tip. You have an F, which is a fine tip and slightly fatter than that. You have a, uh, a soft chisel. Um, it's an even bigger tip. Um, actually, I think I might use that one for this bit. Um, you have, if I can find them, a soft brush and an ordinary brush, which is like the general um, colour. Uh, sorry, tip. So they come in different sizes for different reasons. And I was using an S for these uh, spots. So I'm going to use a soft chisel just because it's a slightly bigger and squarer tip um, and I could do that so and it's softer as well